Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome back to another episode here on the G-Spinish channel. So today we continue the build and progression of my 2016 Camaro SS by continuing the installation of a Magnuson supercharger. So if you guys are new to the channel, be sure to check out some of our previous videos where we show part one, part two, part three of the installation. And if you guys would like, um, you guys can go a little bit further back and check out this car, uh, go down the track and it's NA setup. But today uh, we continue uh, the supercharger install. So for the guys who are at home waiting for the next video to drop, unfortunately, we're still waiting on parts. So on our last episode, we ended up porting the snout on the Magnuson supercharger to clear the k 103 in efforts to stay productive and efficient as we wait for parts. But no luck guys, we're still waiting on parts. It's about, mm, about a week and a half now and we still haven't received any parts. So it's a bit unfortunate because as car guys, waiting for parts is like so much scrutiny for us, right? But uh, they'll get here. I actually reached out to uh, Supercharger Online and basically they said that uh, it's taking a little bit of time because once uh, Magnuson receives an order for whatever components they order, it takes about two to three days for them to pick them and then ship them out. So right from the get go, we were, we were doing for at least a week. But uh, hopefully we get some parts tomorrow. With that being said, I didn't want to just not do anything. So I'm always thinking about something. So currently right now, my car has a Mishimoto thermostat and I'm not one to bash any company, but this thermostat has been horrible. Uh, it's a really bad thermostat. It went down on me a couple of weeks after I bought it and it basically gets stuck open, throws the cold, car goes, the fans stay on and does all kind of crazy stuff. I gotta get rid of this stuff. But if you guys know on this car, we want maximum performance. We want this car to go fast, especially now. Um, that it's gonna have the blower. It's gonna be very, very important that we keep this car cool or else it's gonna pull timing as it goes into the higher temps and it's just gonna run slower. So we really need to have a thermostat that is uh, of a low degree to make sure that we keep this car running cooler. So I reached out to my friends over at uh, Granatelli Motorsports and these guys are uh, they're top notch. One of the, I wanna say one of the best companies out there because uh, their customer service is exceptional and their products is just, you know, the best, I gotta say. They got some really good stuff. As you guys can see here, I already opened it up here. The thermostat came in a little cushing, a little foam there. But um, this is our thermostat, and it's part number 530160. And it is for the GM Chevrolet LT billet thermostat housing, LT1, LT2, LT4, and LT5 cars. So, fits a lot of cars. And this thing is really, really nice. A little pricey though, I gotta admit. It's um, about 200 bucks, I think it was, 215. But it comes with a, a new housing. So this is really nice. So I'll zoom in here for you guys a little bit here. It comes with the little, uh, little billet housing. So really neat. So this housing is gonna replace our current housing that we have on there now and our new thermostat. So let's check it out here. Pretty neat, pretty neat, I gotta admit. So basically this is gonna go like this. I can dig it. So product looks really, really nice. Packaged well, as usual. And the only thing left to do now is installing it because we gotta make sure that this car runs cool. We have to make sure that we don't have a faulty thermostat in there that's gonna stay stuck closed or stay stuck open. So in my opinion, it's worth every penny to pay the extra bucks to get a quality product like this than struggling with uh, inferior product like this Mishimoto here. That's all I'm gonna say on that one. But let's get busy and let's uh, let's swap this thermostat. Okay guys, so this installation is gonna require you to use some channel locks, some pliers, and a 10 millimeter socket. And that's all I can think of now. Because remember, here at Juice Footage, we're totally unprepared and unrehearsed. So let me show you guys where the thermostat is located. So if you come over here, right on the water pump, you're gonna see this little housing. And this is what houses our thermostat. So it has uh, one coolant line coming from the radiator to the housing, and we're gonna remove that. Now, one thing I would like to mention is that right now when I pull this off, it's not gonna have any coolant coming out because we drained all the coolant out for the supercharger. So if you guys at home haven't drained your coolant, which I'm sure you guys have not, 
be sure to put some rags or a plastic bag down here like this. You can put like a little Ziploc bag down here, like a sandwich bag and some rags and try to catch some of that water so you guys don't make a mess. Okay, so we're gonna disconnect this here. We're gonna come over here, get a good grip on it here. Okay, once we do that, we'll get this guy, pull it out, and like I said, my coolant has been drained out. Pull that out, and I'll basically tuck them away. Tuck them away for now so they could be out of the way. Now we're gonna grab a 10 millimeter socket. Okay, so I went ahead and grabbed an extension to make it easier. Okay, so once you remove the three bolts, all you do is pull this thermostat out. And normally, if you were to um, if you were to buy just the thermostat, you would have to reuse this housing. So you would push down, spin it, and then you would remove the thermostat. This is a thermostat that uh, this is made by Mishimoto. So you would remove this. Hmm. Well, this thing basically came apart. So now we know why it was bad. We're not going to be reusing the housing anymore. Let's go ahead and compare it. Okay, if you guys see the housing, this thing goes in here, like this, right? When it opens, look at this little this little design here. It's definitely restricting flow. This one doesn't have that because it uses this style of thermostat. So you could definitely see this housing is gonna flow more than this one because it doesn't have this restriction. Wow, that's pretty neat. I did not see that coming. And this thing looks super cheap compared to this, this guy. Super heavy duty. Not bad. I did notice this thing has a little lip here, but I don't know. It doesn't have a guide for it, so I wonder if you just put it in there like so. And I doubt it, that's how you do it. So you can't use their thermostat on the old housing. So I guess you have to buy both. Damn, I'm gonna cut this little lip off. Let me get a razor blade. All right guys, so the, the battery died there. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is, it has like a little guide here. I guess that's if you're gonna reuse it with the factory housing. I, I don't know how would you use the factory housing with this thermostat. Maybe they send you something similar to this that fits in here, but um, I went with the, the high flowing one. It has a little guide here and I'm sure I could get it to fit but I'm just gonna cut it off because I think it will uh, fit a little better. Oh yeah, much better. It's actually really snug though. Kind of a bit of a challenge to get in there. Get a little bit of multi-purpose grease on here. This should help. It's really snug in there. I'm kind of worried that it's coming off a little bit. Get a little oh, there it goes. That helps. Mm -hmm. yeah, fit really nice. Really snug though. You guys can see that. Fit really nice. All right. I'm gonna take off this O-ring here. So I want to put a little bit of a uh, grease on it. Just old habits are hard to break. Get a little bit moist. There it is. All right. Now this thing's ready to go in. Definitely looks a lot better than, uh, than this guy here. Let's take a look at the OEM. This is an OEM one, this is a Mishimoto. So this O-ring came apart on this one, which is what caused it to get stuck open. Uh-huh. 
Like I said, I do not recommend that thermostat at all. This is an OEM. Put this bad boy back in here. So I think when you don't buy the housing, they send you something like this. So you would just basically put that in there like that. Put your spring. And, and then you would basically put it back in. But we went with the one with the housing, so let's put it on there. I'm really impressed with the way that uh, that design is. It's really nice. It's definitely gonna flow more. So you guys can see that. The goal is to have this car run as cool as possible. So by putting a thermostat of lower degree, it's gonna open up sooner, circulating the, the coolant um, through it, keeping it cool, and then we program our fans to up, turn on sooner. Then we maintain this car operating at a lower temperature. So hopefully I explained that right. Okay, so let's continue. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and uh, put this on. Basically, once you do that, you make sure you have a clean surface. So let me, uh, that's one step I missed. Grab some uh, triflow, something like this. You could do some acetone, something like that. But there you go, clean it up real nice. And then you could uh, put this bad boy back in there. Always uh, start your bolts hand tight. Never start them with a, a ratchet or anything like that because you can risk stripping the bolts. Just like that. Once you set it in place evenly, Give it a good snug and it's good to go. So, we'll wipe it down here. Make sure it looks nice, it really looks nice. We're gonna get this hose in here and we're gonna get some of this, this uh, multi-purpose grease here. Put a little bit on there, just a little bit. Help it slide in <clears throat> and help it seal, just like that. All right, let's go ahead and uh, grab our channel lock or pliers of choice. There's probably uh, better tools to use than this, but this is what I'm going to use. Alright. Get a good snug. Make sure it's good. Very good to me. Same thing. A little bit of that on there. And look at that fitting. That's a good fitting. It's a, a whole lot more aggressive barb than this one. Whoa, look at the hole on that thing too. See the hole? It's a big hole. That's a tiny hole. All right then. Guys over at Granatelli are sure doing a good job. So, like this. Pretty good. Oh yeah, pretty good. Okay guys, so once you have tightened the housing bolts and you have, a, you have the bolts pretty snug on, they're really good, and reconnected your hoses, Next thing you're gonna wanna do is top off your coolant because remember, you guys are gonna lose some coolant. Uh, nothing came out right now when I was doing it because I had drained the coolant for the supercharger install. But you guys who have not drained the coolant, you guys will have some coolant coming out. So, uh, like I said, be sure to put like a Ziploc bag or some microfiber, some towel, something to absorb that coolant from hitting your pulleys so it doesn't squeak and make all kind of nasty noise. Once you once you secured the bolts, be sure to top off your coolant, let it run for a little bit, make sure you get all those little air pockets out, all the air bubbles out, and top it off to the proper level, which shows the show here. So you have uh, you have some markings down there that says cold when hot, and then cold, uh, full when cold. Cold, full, and then on the bottom it says cold hot. Okay guys, so that concludes it. Um, that concludes the install. So if you guys are building a high performance vehicle, be sure to not forget about your thermostat because it's one of the key components that keeps your engine running cool. Uh, don't cheap out with inferior products like what happened to me that I put a, a product that was uh, not of good quality that failed on me. And lucky for me, it got stuck open versus stuck cold and I didn't have any issues, but um, it's something to think about when you replace these type of components. Um, Get a thermostat that matches your needs. We're tuning the car, we're racing the car, so we've got the coldest, we've got 160 degree. So this thermostat is gonna open sooner at 160 degrees, so it's gonna maintain a 
colder operating temperature. Now, you do have to program the fans because now that the thermostat is going to open sooner, uh, we want those fans to kick on sooner. So we make sure that we maintain that lower operating temperature. But that concludes the install, guys. Thanks for watching, and be sure to check us out on the next video where hopefully we get some parts in to finish the install. So talk to you guys later. Thank you.